The frightening situation unfolding in Japan begs the question, how could the president's green energy agenda really be the answer to all our energy needs? Listen to what Speaker of the House John Boehner and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell told me this week. We need to produce energy because we need to bring energy prices down. But let's not forget uh, that if we begin to do all of the above on the energy side, uh, we believe it will create up, up to a million new jobs here in America. We need to quit this anti-production uh, view that's been pervasive. It needs to stop the anti-production view that's so per pervasive in the administration. It needs to change. He's the president. He can change it if he wants to. All right, so isn't now the exact right time to drill, drill, drill and go full throttle on all domestic energy production? Here now we have Dave Goodfriend, former Clinton White House official, Scripps Howard News uh, uh, Service syndicated columnist Roy Murdoch, and Jimmy Pethokoukas, Reuters Breaking Views, Money and Politics columnist. Jimmy Pethokoukas, I want to start with this thought, okay? I think President Obama actually has handled himself well in the face of this, you know, barrage of criticism of everything to do with nuclear power, obviously from the Japanese uh, disaster. I want to give him credit on that. Do you give him credit on that? On the nuclear power issue, absolutely. It would have been the easiest thing for him to do is to say that we need to have some sort of five-year moratorium just like he do with the oil drilling. So he's been much better on the nuclear issue than the fossil fuel issue. But unfortunately, on that issue, he's been terrible. Uh, they're anti-fossil fuel. There's no more offshore drilling. He's used both the EPA and the Interior Department to kind of limit onshore drilling. Uh, he's completely against, uh, you know, any more fossil fuel production. And that is a key issue, and he's horrible on that. David Goodfriend. Yes. $100 oil, $3.55 gasoline. People are furious at that. And your man keeps attacking fossil fuel. He's waging war against all fossil fuels. First of all, Larry, I just want to say how warming it is to be with three of my favorite conservatives. <laughs> I, I just think, I don't feel outnumbered, I feel yeah, loved. We're just truth, love. truth tellers, <laughs> that's all we are. The, the answer to your question kind of goes... I was good on nuclear. I was you very were, modest. You were on, very gentle, I really and I appreciate that. I on nuclear, well, let me, not on fossil on fuels. On fossil fuels, let me point this out. It does feel sometimes like we conservatives and, and progressives live in two different worlds. The world I live in, there are leases on public lands held today by oil companies that they're not using. I don't know why. In the world I live in, production is actually up almost 7% relative to two years ago, the last time we had an oil shock. The world I live in, we actually see the president suggesting more drilling before the BP oil uh, uh, disaster. He suggested more drilling right. and really but upset not after, the environment. But not after. After we just that. been here, please, because drilling is out of bounds. Now, they've got a couple of permits, finally, for offshore, but everybody else is shut out. Now, what world do you live in? You heard Dave Goodfriend's world. Is yours the same world or a different world? I think it's a different world, actually, than Dave's. Uh, I think, look, if, if absolutely nothing else, we ought to be able to drill for as much natural gas offshore as po possible. I saw the Gulf oil spill last year and that gave me some concern. I think we have to be very cautious about offshore oil drilling. We need to do it to be as cautious as possible. As far as offshore natural gas goes, however, if there's a, a natural gas leak offshore, it just goes in the air. It doesn't bother anybody. So I don't see any excuse for not doing as much offshore uh, natural gas drilling as possible. And certainly on onshore, if you have a spill onshore, that's pretty easy to clean up. So we should be doing as much onshore uh, production as we can. We own this stuff. It belongs to us. We don't have to worry about Colonel Gaddafi or the Wahhabis or any, anybody else stepping in the way. And it doesn't present uh, all the concerns that, will, that no doubt will be part of the political discussion. See, after Dave the Goodfriend, Japanese nuclear disaster. I, I have heard President Obama say he likes natural gas because it's relatively yes. clean. I've even heard Nancy Pelosi, your good friend Nancy Pelosi, My good friend. say that she likes natural <laughs> gas because it's relatively clean. But here's what they don't get. To get natural gas, as DeRoy has just articulated, you have to drill for it, David. Well, when will the Democrats understand the drilling part to get natural gas, which could solve our problems? Yes, we certainly have the ability. I think what, what all of you are alluding to, the elephant in the room here we got to get rid of, I don't mean the Republican elephant. <laughs> Three elephants, is the <laughs> Is the energy independence. How do we get there? How do we decrease our dependence on foreign oil? Because that is what's spiking prices right now, is our dependence on a very unstable region in the world. So there I would say you do have to look at coal, you do have to look at natural gas, and you do have to look at drilling? renewable. Do you have to drill? Yeah, look at it or you drill for it. Energy. Drill. We have you a look at it or you drill for it. We of oil <laughs> sitting offshore. We have about 10 Saudi Arabias stuck in all that oil shale. Are you suggesting we're, we're we should not, be we're, energy we're not, independent? We're not, we're not, you know what? We need to have a broad portfolio of energy sources. Sure, sure, sure. We sure. need to drill more. Then let's see where we're at. But we're not doing that. Here's the problem. It's horrible It's clean energy, and he's sacrificing all that other energy production on that. What's the, I heard, I heard, what's the percentage of energy and power from 
windmills and solar it's less power. Two, three percent. And, and, very right. small. So if we double it, it goes up to five or six if we're lucky, Correct. if we double it. And that's right. going to be what? Doubling of that to five percent will take like 50 years? With a lot of subsidies and, and government involvement, all that stuff. It'd be nice if these things that's would do what we wanted. Right. That's why he wants the carbon tax. These, 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 base, these, base, right. these, like basically, China these are the fuel sources of tomorrow. I think it would be nice if we get there. But right now, people have to fill, their, get, fill up their tanks tonight and tomorrow. And uh, solar right. power and wind power aren't going to do that. And David, no, friend, by the way, what is the role? What is the role of the EPA in all this? Because some people argue that the EPA is imposing a backdoor cap and trade. Some people say the EPA is an even bigger enemy of oil and gas and other fuels, including coal, than than the rest of the green energy lobby. The EPA. Now, what's going to happen to the EPA? I'll answer the EPA. I just have to answer this point right here. The Chinese are cleaning our clocks right now in renewable energy. They are subsidizing solar. They, they are, are they, subsidizing. That, that, that is, are, that is a facade. Why don't we just hand it to the they, Chinese? They're, they're, they're Oh, sure. Natural give it gas to and coal give it to plants Chinese. like they're going out of right. style. Sure, and, but and they're doing a few all green energy initiatives win over above. people like yourself. By the way, what's people trying to do it? What's trying to drill them? Doing drilling for oil and gas off the coast of Florida if they're all so green. Yeah, huh? that. If they, they can drill really off the yeah, coast of that. Florida, yeah, Droy, why can't we? All right, let me all switch right. gears. <laughs> today, today, an activist Wisconsin judge temporarily blocked Governor Scott Walker's collective bargaining restraint. Republican Governor Scott Walker remains confident the law will stand in the end. Listen to what he told me Monday. Unions are seeking an injunction to stop the legislation altogether. Is such a thing legally possible? No, I don't think so. I mean, again, unless you had someone in judiciary trying to go well beyond their bounds. But legally, we have every right to go forward and do what we did. It followed the legal process. It followed the law. Uh, in fact, what we're doing here in many ways is actually more generous than even what federal government employees get. We pointed it out to the president a week ago when he took an attack at me that federal government employees, for the most part, do not have collective bargaining for wages and benefits. And in fact, they pay 28 percent on average for the health insurance, twice what I'm asking for from state and local employees here in Wisconsin. Jimmy P, is this a case of a liberal activist judge on the decision today to overturn this or put a stay on it, trying to overrule the votes of the people via the legislature? Uh, this was a verdict first, reasoning later. The legal experts I talked to think this is going to get tossed out. Uh, it, the, law, the law is going to stand, and it should stand, because it is key. Depowering these unions is key to both getting the state's budget under control and doing something about our education But system. you're from Wisconsin, I am, I am. How can the judges think they can overturn the will of the people through the legislature? How is that possible? This is one of these activist judge things. Larry, this is a really simple thing. I actually I want to agree with you, Jimmy, on something. This is a I'm relatively angry. minor point of law as to whether or not the public uh, uh, hearing rules. Here's the big question. Why is it that states like Washington and Montana and now Maryland, with Democratic governors, are able to cut a deal to cut the budget with their unions, but Scott yeah, Walker, the point. Scott Walker would about get the, the budget. Oh, let me finish, Jimmy. The Scott shit. Walker would get the worst manager of the year award right. in the private sector. The guy cannot run a two-car parade. Scott Walker cannot run a two-car parade. And he got, and he got, got, and he got, 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 and he got I want this. I want to set him straight. Let, you're going to get the last thought. Oh, well, I want to talk about the climate in which all of this is happening. Uh, I just did a piece for National Review Online today about the death threats, dozens of death threats that Republicans are getting in Wisconsin, things like slipped under the door of State Senator Like Obama's death threats. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Excuse right, me, excuse me. Too. I the only that. good Republican is a dead Republican. There you see a picture of, of uh, Governor Walker with crosshairs on his face. Notes that say things like, we will hunt you down, we will slit all, all right. your throats, we will drink your blood. Wow. This is That's the civility we're about. Like like it's just like Tucson. Awful, awful, awful. It's just like Sarah David Palin. Just I agree. Sarah Roy Palin Murdoch should stop as well. And James Petrakokas. <laughs>